What's going on guys? Thanks for coming back to another video. Um, today, I am heat treating a ton of knives, okay? Um, I've already got a bunch of these foil wrapped. A lot of them are stainless. And I am going to show you my process for heat treating. We're gonna do one of these in 440C stainless. This is my eight inch chef model. And uh, the reason I haven't done many heat treat videos is because Anytime somebody posts a heat treat, anything, people want to argue about it. And because, you know, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat and, you know, everybody finds the way that they like to do it that works for them. So I am completely open for critique and advice and all this stuff. Um, but I don't want people arguing with me about how I heat treat my knives. Okay, so that's why I haven't done it. But we're going to do it today and just show you guys my step. Um, I'll show you a little bit here. These are all kind of already wrapped in foil. Um, I've got about 15 stainless ones to do today. I've got a batch already in the even heat warming up. Um, so I guess I'll just kind of show you. This is how I start right here. An 8 inch chef. It's drilled. Um, it's ready to heat treat. I don't do any grinding before heat treat. Okay. These are all full thickness. And this is 440C. Now, the first step to doing this, and I've actually been doing some of these smaller knives, so I have a little spot right here I'll have to cut off, um, is getting these wrapped with this high temp stainless foil, okay? Um, I'll probably try to put a link below uh, to this stuff. I don't remember, this is from Specialty Metals, LLC. Um, I ordered a big, big roll of it, and it's lasted me a long time. Um, so I'll try to put a link below to which one I use because uh, there's a few different temperature ratings of that foil. You have to pick whatever steel you're going to do. Um, like some of it goes up to 2,500 degrees, 2,200 degrees, whatever it is. Higher temp, more expensive. So kind of pick what foil uh, for what temp your heat treat is on your steel, okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of just do this right with you guys and show you my process. Um, you can cut the stuff with scissors, but I use kind of these like tin snips. And what I like to do is kind of, I probably should have cleaned up a little bit before I started doing this, but you guys know that's kind of how these videos are. So I kind of lay this, lay this out. You guys, actually, you can see it pretty good here to where it gives me enough room to fold this over and fold it into itself, okay? So I kind of just eyeball, always do a little bit extra just in case. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this back with these snips. Try to do it as straight as possible. Okay. We'll get this out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Let me uh, turn my, my timers going off right here. It takes, you know, I've got the LB22.5 even heat in 240 volt, and it still takes quite a while for it to get up to that. I'm doing it at 1950. Um, it takes quite a while to get up to that, but finally just hit it with that first batch. So what I like to do, you guys can kind of see, I'm going to actually, before I do this, move this camera in a little bit and show you guys a little better angle. Okay, so we've got it laid out here. You can see kind of what it looks like. Always wear gloves. These are leather gloves. Um, this stuff will cut you really easily. What I do, and like I said, you guys, do it however you want to do it, but this is what works for me, okay? I fold it over like this. You can see you want to get everything really tight. You can see the end of the knife there. And then I take my ends. I've got a little bit too much, but that's okay and fold those ends over. Now, I've seen people use those welding clamps or stuff like that. To do this, you don't need it. It's just get some good gloves, fold it over. And I kind of left a little extra just so you guys can see what I'm doing here a little bit better. And what I do is kind of flatten that down, take a regular hammer, Seam 
seam really good. Take your next fold. I'm going to bring it right into the edge because I left, I've got a little too much on there, but it should still work okay. It's just got to fit in your oven. Fold it over a second time. Bring it down here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just folding it over itself twice to create a really good seal. just like that it's in its little packet I didn't put any paper or anything in there with it and uh, it is ready to go in the oven all right so I'm just about to throw that in the oven these are all high carbon steel knives I already did this morning um, another one and then this is a batch of 3v stainless I'm doing right now um, and I've got the fourth one over here in the plates um, and then this is the rest of them in 440 that are all getting done. This is that kitchen knife we're doing today. Okay, so the problem um, with doing all this stainless is I only have one set of aluminum plate quench uh, blocks here. And I'm going to put a link to how I built it probably over here or over here or something so you guys can see what I use. Um, what happens is after you do three or four of these um, in the plates, those plates get too hot to be able to do the next one. Um, so kind of what I'm doing is four at a time and letting these plates cool and putting some ice even on top of them to cool them down. Um, I think what would be best is probably get another set of plates I can switch them out with. Um, but for now, this works, okay? And uh, here's one I've got in here right now. This is just a bird and trout knife, and you can see kind of how that looks. You'll see better here at the end of this video, but I'm going to go ahead and put this kitchen knife in, um, and then I'll show you just how it goes. But you can see that's what we did earlier, and I just use a pair of pliers because this baby is hot, hot, hot. I mean, really hot. And close it fast, try to keep all that heat in. Um, and then I'll check back in. I'm going to give that about a 15 minute soak at temperature. All right, guys, it's been soaking for about 20 minutes. These plates have cooled off actually really fast. I just threw a fan on them. Um, we're going to try to get this thing out of here, get it in the plates as fast as possible. And then we're going to blast it with compressed air to cool it off as quick as possible. I'm going to just keep the camera running. You guys can see the plates from there, the oven, the whole deal. And you can kind of see how this goes. It's super hot, so wear gloves, be careful. And uh, what happens sometimes, and it'll probably happen with this larger knife, is the foil kind of will get caught on those little pegs inside the oven. So getting it out sometimes is a pain, but hopefully it comes right out and uh, everything goes smooth. Let's do it. You can see you gotta get it in there as fast as possible. And then I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. And right to the compressed air. Sorry, this is going to get loud. And then I like to let it sit in there for maybe like a minute-ish. And by that time, it has that aluminum has absorbed that heat really good, and you can pretty much it's, you can touch it with your bare hands almost by then. So I'll kick this back on when I cut this foil off, show you guys kind of what it looks like, and uh, just see how it turned out. All right, so here is our uh, man. This place is a mess. All right, our little packet here. We're gonna cut this open and uh, check this blade out. Now, like I said, I'm going to try to put links below to all the stuff I'm using. Um, this stainless foil is a little bit expensive. Um, every aspect of doing the stainless is a little more expensive, but I think it really opens up a whole nother route of new customers. And once you start doing a lot in stainless, um, 
it's just a lot easier to maintain and people seem to really like that aspect of it a lot. So I can feel it's still warm in my hand, but uh, should be good to go. And there you can kind of see some really cool coloration there. And one good thing about this is it always stays really straight, especially when you plate quench and you leave the blade full thickness. Now, right now, it's still warm. It's warm enough to where I could cool it down with water or whatever. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I can hold my hand. It's probably at a couple hundred degrees or something. So let's cool this down really quick. And we will do a, uh, I don't know, we'll do a little file test for you guys. Come around here and you can kind of see. Oh, let's see. Skates a file. Really good. I mean, really, really good. That thing is really hard. And uh, now it's ready for temper. So I've got about 10 more knives to finish up today. Um, but I wanted to quickly do this. I've had a lot of people ask about it. Like I said in the beginning, there's reasons why I haven't done it in the past. And I'm sure somebody's going to argue with the way I'm doing this. I've done a lot of testing with each steel that I use. Um, and that's why I don't use a million types of steel. I pick what I like and it works really good. You get your process down and kind of stick with that. So that being said, I'm going to finish doing these today. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as good as I can. Um, a lot of my steel I get from New Jersey Steel Baron and on their website, they have very specific heat treat specifications for each steel. That's what I've always used and that's what I have really good results with. So I'll probably put a link below to that as well. Again, um, I'll try to link everything below what I used. Um, and you can see heat treating is as simple as you want to make it. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. And like I said, I've done a lot of research and um, messing with this to get it figured out to how I like it. And I'm really happy with this. So that being said, you guys, thanks for watching and have a good one.